to practice. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these couples today who will be joining us and who are joining us already as we discuss marriage. Those who are married, those who are engaged, those who are thinking about marriage, God, thank you for them being on and about to glean the information, knowledge, and wisdom that they are here from these men and women of God who will share with them today. God, we pray that you will strengthen marriages today. Yes. We pray that you will heal marriages today. Yes, we pray, God, that you will restore marriages today. We pray, God, that you would give wisdom and insight to those who are considering marriage, that they would glean this knowledge and practice it to, to lay a foundation in their marriage whereby it will bless them and glorify you. And we pray that those who are thinking about marriage will hear your, your, from these couples, what a blessing, what a powerful anointing it is that you've set aside this relationship called marriage. We thank you for what's in store. We thank you for how you will lead the discussion. We thank you for how you will grant wisdom to answering the questions. Guide us, we pray. Thank you for your presence now in Jesus name. And we say, Amen. 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 Well, as you know, this morning, our topic in terms of our discussion today is about romance. And the reason I, uh, I was really led to talk about romance, because a lot of times in marriage conferences, as we come, we talk a lot about communication. We talk a lot about conflict. And we talk a lot about those different things, but never really a much about how to keep the spark and the fire and the excitement and the joy and the camaraderie of your marriage as you live lives together. And listen, and listen, and we've chosen the couples that we've chosen because we need to understand that marriage goes in phases. Mm -hmm. As you know, you start off young and then you move to those transitions of life. And it doesn't mean that because you go to those transitions of life, that marriage should, cannot be exciting and marriage should not be uh, 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 thrilling and it should not be romantic. And so we hope today that you'll hear some things and that will bless and strengthen your marriage. We hope today that you'll hear some things that will help you understand your role, your responsibility in marriage and how God wants to bless your marriage. And so we just thank you for being on and we're trusting that you're going to have a blessed time. And listen, and I'm excited about the individuals who are joining us today. One, the first couple I want to introduce to you, no stranger, neither one of these couples are strangers to Ecclesia. And but uh, the first one, he and I have been doing marriage conferences literally for the past 25, 30 years together. Uh, we go once a year uh, to his church uh, for the marriage conference at Atherton, and we enjoy it every year around February. And God has truly, has truly blessed and, and given us an opportunity to really pour into the lives of couples and help strengthen marriage. I'm talking about Pastor Larry and his beautiful wife, Sister Patricia Weaver. They're from the Atherton Baptist Church. And they're going to come on in just a moment and they're going to introduce themselves. And we praise God for them. And I thank God for them. And listen, and we're about to get some great wisdom. Uh, uh, Pastor Larry, Pastor Patricia, welcome to our panel today and listen and, and, and just let, let the folks know who you are. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, everyone. <laughs> We're glad to be here with you, uh, Pastor Josh and Sister Linda. It counted the privilege and honor to be here. And I like the way you phased that uh, introduction that you chose some young and some old. You know? <laughs> I looked at him yeah. and I said, RBS. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we're, in that category. we're in that category too. Yeah, we are grateful that, yeah. the, that the flame and the fire has not went out. Amen. Yeah. You know, yeah. so we are yeah. thankful and grateful uh, for you and for uh, your wife and for the Ecclesia ministry. And uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say anything else. I'm yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, well, we've been married 40 years. Uh, and so we're grateful for 40 good years. Amen. Okay? Amen. I mean, it has not been without some challenges, you know, Amen. when you have a large family and everything, you know, mm -hmm. if you don't have no challenges, they'll bring challenges. So, yeah. Anyway, we're, <laughs> we're grateful we've weathered storms and been through, um, you know, been to the mountaintop, been to the valley, but uh, we're grateful that uh, we're still standing in the midst of it all. So uh, just grateful. Uh, wife want to say something here? 
Well, is this the time that we talk about our romance? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma'am. I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready. Ahead. Ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. So, as my husband said, we've been married 40 plus years, and it just gets better. Actually, I think the longer you can stay together, um, no matter what your ups and downs are, you know, if you keep God first, you keep God first, keep those priorities in order. You got it first, then the marriage, okay? And then your children. So we keep those, you know, in order. Don't put the children ahead of the, you know, the marriage. Don't put yourself ahead of God. So we just keep everything in order and everything works out beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Well, listen, and our second couple comes from Friendship Baptist Church. And listen, I have admired and appreciated this brother's ministry for years long before he became senior pastor at friendship baptist church i've watched him grow I, I i've been been impressed with his ministry and his and his passion and his enthusiasm for the people of god and to be able to call him friend is a privilege as well i'm talking about pastor kenneth curry and his beautiful wife karima uh, from friendship baptist church in your belinda welcome pastor curry and sister karima god bless you this morning Good morning. Thank you. We appreciate the opportunity. I guess we're the young couple. Um, yeah. <laughs> we don't feel that young anymore, uh, but we're very grateful uh, to, be a, to be a part and grateful to be invited and asked to share with you. Uh, I don't think we think we know everything, but we've learned enough in eight years of marriage. So next month, June the 14th, we will uh, be, we will have been married eight years uh, and uh, we've uh, been a blended family as well as uh, we've been a blended family as well as uh, having opportunity to uh, be, uh, you know, newlyweds and having a, a, a child grow up with us during the marriage. Uh, and so uh, there have been uh, various uh, uh, challenges, but also discoveries uh, for us as we've come. And so very grateful for that. Uh, and I'm going to let my wife uh, Karima, they call her Lady Karima around here, but let her uh, talk to you and then we'll land wherever else we need to. <laughs> Good morning to everyone. Um, thank you again, as Pastor said, for the invitation. You know, part of our, um, our instruction was to talk about uh, our romance or how our romance is practiced over our time of marriage. And um, I'm, I'm a high compliance person, so I like to go follow instructions, right? So I went to look up the definition of romance to make sure my definition is like the real definition and not just my idea of what I'm thinking. And actually, um, the, the dictionary difference was very different than what I thought in terms of romance, that romance is the excitement or the mystery um, mm. of love that takes us away from everyday life. And so when I think of romance that way, then it's, um, I think it makes a little different than uh, romance versus foreplay okay. or romance versus um, how do we just keep the fire alive versus how do we keep excitement for each other and mm -hmm. an escape, if you will. Um, and as pastor mentioned, you know, with we're, going into year eight, but I think if we, year eight. Uh, we'll celebrate year eight. Yes. We're in year eight. Yeah. And that um, over this time, I think one of the things that we have grown into is learning how to create safe space for each other at home. Amen. That home is the place where you can be wounded on the outside, but when you come home, that's the place where you can be renewed and restored and you can have love. And that's that excitement that gets you away from some of the drama and the, the other things that go on on the outside um, of the home. And I think um, one of the things that we've learned and one of the questions will be about conflict is that my spouse is not my enemy. Amen. And Good. we're on the same team. And Amen. that if I can't be your best champion, then we're in trouble, that we are the best of champions that we have for each other. Um, and our home is home base and safe space, 
no matter what else is going on around. And we can't be opposed and fighting each other and then have to fight the enemy and all the other drama going out on in the rest of the world. So our job is to create that, uh, that space that we can love each other and explore and grow and even disagree together without um, hurting each other and wounding each other at home and outside. And I think that one of the things that you have to do when it comes to romance, and I, I think romance, I think intimacy, connection. The other pieces that you have to think about are the things that challenge romance, right? So my wife just talked about conflict. The idea too is uh, that we don't bring uh, all of the church stuff. At some point, you got to stop talking about the church stuff <laughs> and bring all of that home. And even my wife works a job outside of friendship. So even some of that can't be, we can't get, because I have the, the savior complex. I'm trying to fix it and I can't fix what happens at Loma Linda University Hospital. <laughs> sure. So, and then I'll get frustrated. So I think it's really kind of figuring out, okay, at some point we don't need to talk about our jobs. And sometimes I have to look at the pastorate as a job. Um, uh, uh, sometimes we can't talk about our jobs. And then I think the other thing for us, I love what Sister Weaver said in terms of position, uh, even with, with, with our uh, kids, uh, us coming, for Lady Karima and I coming in, um, we had a teenager at the house and really trying to figure that piece out. Uh, we haven't had as much with when we got married, uh, our oldest was grown and out and kind of on his own. Uh, so we didn't have to figure out some things there. Uh, and and when we started, it was it was a lot of conflict because my youngest son, our youngest son, was not used to having a man telling him what to do. And so it was yeah. a constant conflict, constant. I think we're in a better place now uh, just because he's grown to appreciate uh, our relationship, but mm -hmm. meaning his mother and I, and then uh, his relationship with me. But I think you have to be able to kind of see the things that thwart or, or challenge romance or intimacy because we'll bring that stuff in our conflicts come in i think that's why we always talk about it come in um but also uh kind of creating schedules um i i was i got married for the first time at 40 and uh have been leading in church so really working to be righteous and pure and all of that stuff and one of the things that we don't really talk about is initiation i talked to a lot of uh, young guys, younger guys, younger guys around my age that didn't understand initiation and things happen over time where in their relationships, women were doing a lot of the initiation for, for sex or intimacy, uh, being able to kind of do that. And then scheduling, we kind of have a sense of when romance or sex happens um, and, you know, kind of passing on those tips, but you have to cre create, we've learned you create rituals or create, um, 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 routines. That's the word. Thank you. You create routines. If, 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 if I come in and I've been at work all day and I don't necessarily every night have to, cause I'm a, a morning shower person, but if I come in at night uh, to take a shower, then there's, there's a whole different expectation. That's we know right. something else is happening. And so there's, you build that within yourself and you have ways to communicate where everything has, does not have to be explicit right but it can be implicit it can be we've heard that word implicit with with, with bias and stuff but it can be <laughs> implicit where it can be subtle i think a lot of times we think that romance has to be uh uh forward just like put out there but there are some subtle things that kind of happen um and uh that we work through and we work on and i may have taken up too much time but i want to get that in and we'll <laughs> go where it goes to go. that's all right well, you know, you had time to share that. So I appreciate that because you've touched on some things that our viewers have asked. They've asked some questions regarding some of those things. And as we talk about it, one of the questions was, how do we keep romance going for 12 years? And I think each of you kind of addressed that in terms of what's needed and necessary in order for romance to, to take place. And I love the fact that you talked about the scheduling aspect and understanding there's certain things that you can't, you can't, you can't save your spouse from and there are certain things that you really don't need to bring home because all that does is hamper and hinder uh, the romance and so i think along with that question comes the question of how do you keep romance going as you get older those who change especially with the changes of the body 
that take place in effect. And again, Sister Weaver talked about the fact that how over the years it hasn't gotten, it's gotten better, you know, and and cause time and how you handle uh, communication and how you interact with one another and what you do. Um, you know, one of the things Lynn and I do is we often practice dating in our marriage. You know, we, I know I, you know, I tell young people all the time, I'm counseling a couple now. I said, whatever you did to win her, you got to do the same thing to keep her. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So if you made sacrifices and all those kind of things at the beginning to win her affection and get her to say yes to you and say, and be, then the same things that you did to win her, you got to do to keep her. And so, you know, she and I have often practiced over the years, just getting away, doing things that we like to do, dating and hanging out. We love restaurants. We love plays. We like to do those things. And though to us, that keeps romance alive, the drive back and forth, the talking to each other, the, the interaction, the developing a friendship uh, in the midst of all of that, because that's what it does, because you got to be friends, too. That's right. That's you know, right. you just can't right. be in this thing and just just only inter interact with one another based on stuff that you like and then don't deal with anything else. You got to become friends. And so one of the questions was, is this, uh, as you talked about the issue of sex, and I think we can elaborate on this a little more. Mm -hmm. What is a healthy sexual relationship with your spouse? Mm -hmm. I'm going to open that up because I think each of uh, you can address that from the paradigms and perspectives where you're at. Well, I could dive in. I don't oh, yes. mind. Uh, right. You've a senior pastor. You know, I always <laughs> jump. They said, well, you know, I once was young and now I'm old, you know, so. But um, let me let me kind of uh, say something uh, with regard to what the statement you made, Josh, where you mm -hmm. said that, uh, talk about the same thing, um, you know, it, it took to catch, you know, the same thing it takes to keep. Right. I want to take that to another level. Matter of fact, it takes more to yeah. keep. After you catch calls, she's more expensive now than she <laughs> was. Amen. Oh, so I'm going to tell you that right now. Stuff that I was true. doing then, I'm doing a whole lot more than what I was doing then. You know? So that's I'm like, crazy. whatever the guy says, it's cheaper you're right, to keep sir. now. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. because you raised the expectations. Uh, that's right? that's what you have to do, and that's my point. That's it. You have to constantly take the level up that's right. every year. You can't just think that you're going to be able to right. just do the same old thing. You have to bring some new excitement in there. You have to take some new adventures. You have to create some romance. And, and like, um, I'm just like uh, Sister Kareem, a lady Kareem. I'm, and I looked up the word romance and I was like, what is this? <laughs> I was like, okay, now I don't know now, you know, I'm trying to uh, surely be anti-bias and surely neutral and things. So uh, let me be careful because, you know, I, I'm generally the one that goes off the rails. So <laughs> You're all uh, right, Pastor Weaver. Anyway, You're all right, you know, Pastor sure but, but with that being said, I'm just saying <laughs> that, you know, I think that you have to, um, the romance of what basically each couple has I want to say it's not a one size fits all. That's yeah. right. That's right. It's not a yeah, one size right. fits all not. because you know as the psalmist writes in Psalm one thirty nine, we're created different, and so what she likes, uh, maybe Linda doesn't like, or maybe Karima doesn't, yeah. or vice versa with the men, and so you have to get to know your mate, yeah, and is. you have to know the things about your mate, even when it goes into the sexual part of the relationship. Mm -hmm. There are certain parts of the body she might like for me to touch that some your wife don't want you touch. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And so you have to realize mm -hmm. that. And uh, some people, you have to think about what is going to be healthy for you. And that comes with knowing your mate. That comes with ex taking experience. Matter of fact, that comes with asking the question, <laughs> what do you like? Yeah, now some people, you know, I'm just being honest. Now some people don't want to talk about yeah. sex and don't want to talk about this. And I know my wife's sweet spot. Yeah. Y'all ain't hearing me. Every man should. We heard you. You, you, we heard you need you. to know your wife's touching Yes. Spot, and your wife need to know yours. Right. Amen. And so yes, now and it I ain't the same say, for each woman. Yeah, right. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm gonna move on into another thing because somebody will say, What is a healthy sex life? And I think people have to understand and they have to know within their own relationship because of 
sometimes there can be health challenges and there could be yeah. other challenges. And a lot of times as you get older, people don't even recognize that and don't want to admit it. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, you know, I'm not functioning at the level I was functioning at. My wife's hitting my leg now. She's saying I must be telling too much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, yeah, you're not you're not functioning at the level I was when I was 20. Right. You know, I'm Amen. To yeah, well, I'm just, I mean, you know, well, I'm no Pastor Curry, 40 and so on and so forth. Oh, he yeah. almost 50. Yeah, almost 48. <laughs> 48. <laughs> 48. Not as young, but, but I'm, I'm still here. Anyway, I'm just I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying mm. to just say what I'm saying. Let my wife go on in because you know how. <laughs> That's good, Pastor. Thank you. Go ahead, Sister Purchase. Amen. Amen. I um uh, I just want to say it starting off like what he said was that uh no one size fit all. So we're all so different as far as what what's romantic and what's sexual and all this kind of thing is different, you know. And so for me, just little things, and I think we all felt a responsibility for this um workshop. So I, I looked up the word romantic also. <laughs> so I looked it up too. And we get all these uh, different definitions. So even the definitions are different. So yeah. we're different. Yeah. The definitions exactly. are even different. Okay. So one thing that my husband said, and it's so true, is that you have to know your mate. You have to yes. know what they like, what they don't like, and everything. But for me, just little things are sexy. I mean, it like, like, uh, Lady Karima said about even staying at home. I love staying at home. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something that I really found out some real romance when that pandemic hit. That's right. Amen. Right. 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 You know what? Amen. I'm, 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 I'm Amen. Ready. Go ahead. Get me this long. You know, but Amen. if you're 65 and older, you need to stay home. That's right. <laughs> we was isolated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good care of me. Say, baby, now you know you are. I'm going to take care of you. <laughs> and you know yes, ma'am. He said to me, he said, babe, it's just you and me. Yes, and you know that means, we, we, I mean, I miss my kids. I miss my grandkids. It was hard for me. Right. But they said, you know, that you don't, you, oh, you don't really need to be around your kids, your grandkids. And that was difficult. But I had Big Daddy here with me. <laughs> Oh, oh, that was romantic for me, okay? Because yeah. you know, he'd be running here, running there, and you know how your pastors are. So yes, gonna, I know that the, the pastor's wives know. And, <laughs> and so we could, I, I'm not saying that this is a great thing to happen. It wasn't, you know, but it did teach me some things about my husband that yes, how yes, we yes. can really have romance and be at home and just love each other, you know? Yeah. So that part was good. I'll stop right there. <laughs> yeah, uh, we agree, Sister Weaver, but we, okay. had, we had two grownups uh, in our house besides us during the pandemic because <laughs> everybody came back uh, oh. and, and that was fine. Uh, we, we, like uh, you and Pastor Weaver uh, and uh, as Pastor Josh said about him, uh, Sister uh, Beckley, the uh, we like to be able to go out. We do kind of schedule our uh, uh, date night every Thursday, um, and we try and stay committed to that. Uh, but we we really like uh, traveling, and I don't need nobody else. We've right. gone with other couples, but I don't really need nobody else. But me and Karima, we can go, and you know, and yeah. I th I think that where we are. Um, I think it helped. I'll tell something that a lot of people don't know. She'll be shocked that I'll share this, but people ask us all the time. We've been married eight years. We were 40-ish when we got married. Uh, we had one more drive to try and maybe have a baby, and we did. We worked on that. Uh, we went through a lot that we have not shared just because people internalize some things from their yeah. pastors differently, so we don't share everything. We but did. we did everything we could, and at one point, that's when I realized that I, I, I love my wife at one point, as much as I want to have a baby, I thought I was going to lose my wife. And for me, I might cry. For me, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth yeah. having a baby and then not having her. If we're going to have yeah. a baby, we're going to do it together. If not, I'm not, I wasn't built to raise no kids by myself. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm telling y'all the truth. Either. And, that, and that, was the, that, was, that was the end. It didn't matter how much money it cost. It didn't matter anything else. I was like, we're not doing this. 
again. And when doctors are like, well, we could do, no, we good. We're going to move on. We're going to spend this money and we're going to go and we can, we can do more. And we're able to do that. I think we have value. We've tried to take our kids on vacation. They got a hundred things to do. We good. We've gone with people and that's been good, but we really have a good time by ourselves, yeah. me and Karima. And um, I think we're able to explore and talk and do. And I, I love what, what both the Weavers and the Beckley said before in terms of building friendship and relationship with each other. I think that that leads to it. I always talk our young people here, we used to do what we call passion and purity, uh, kind of our version, the black version of true love awaits. And there was a book that we used to teach the kids. It was called uh, Good Sex, God Sex. We were talking to the young people. But one of the things I learned from that teaching was that uh, sex does not equal intimacy. Right. Intimacy right. equals intimacy. Right. Right. And so that has always stuck with me, has always <laughs> been ultra important to me that we build a, a relationship. And even like when I go back to not bringing home the church, sometimes the, the stuff that 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 I'm frustrated with makes her matter, right? Then she gets mad, and then I'm then I'm upset that she mad at my people or mad at the situation. Right, right. I can let it go. So we go back and forth. So you figure out, hey, let's not talk about it. Let's leave it alone. Um, learning when we each need to decompress and not be ready to talk about some of this stuff. Uh, I think that that's uh, uh, really important. But being able to connect and I think uh, be be friends. All of that stuff that you say, you know, we're eight years in, and that means we're also eight years into uh, our exploration of one another sexually. We're still learning, still figuring out things. And I think Pastor Weaver said that earlier, that there are things that just change over time that you learn. And what uh, Karima was saying, I'll let her say it for herself, is that we're, we're changing. Even as we get older, there are some things that change. Yes, so we, we have to be honest <laughs> about it. We're not fixed people. Say, yeah. not still, I'm not the same person I was when I first got married. Yes, I think that there's a part of me that's better, uh, and and you know that type of thing. Uh, but I think we, even in one of the things, uh, even about um, uh, trying to have a baby, that the first part of that was so rudimentary because they you start you try on your own you you track you track an ovulation thing and you do all that stuff and 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 there's no romance in that it's just activity but we got <laughs> spike here we gotta do this gotta do that and i and i learned over that that was as much as it was necessary it wasn't fun it wasn't intimate it wasn't connecting it mm -hmm. was process okay. i think now now we grow to understanding it all of our life can be fun. It can yeah. be spontaneous. It can be intimate. It can be uh, even unnecessary. You know, they, like you, just this, just what we want to do. Uh, yeah. Being able to kind of see it from there. And I know Karima has wanted to say something else. Well, I just wanted to um, tag on to intimacy. That um, a healthy sex life comes from a healthy, intimate relationship, mm -hmm. and they're not the same. Yeah. So, what is our life before we? are sexually intimate. So are we kind to one another? Do we talk yeah. loving to one another? Sometimes it's just walking around throughout the day, giving a touch or being silent or just kind of, you know, sometimes he just needs a good dinner. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some stuff is practical, right? Like, I'm not going to be all upset because I've been dreaming of sex all day and he comes in and he's still wound up from the day. We need to be considerate of one another. So like, what do you need right now? I know what I'm feeling, but what does my husband need? He might need to, as you say, decompress, or there may be something else that needs some winding down. And then but with us both um, working a lot and, and having these busy and these crazy schedules, we can both get caught in our own offices and in separate rooms of the house for hours. Like we just get stuck and I can get stuck in the computer and it's one email after another. And before you know it, it's almost midnight. And now oh. the thing that's uh, the, coming to kill intimacy is exhaustion. That's right. Because now we're tired. Or, you know, you're saying something crazy on the news and now you all wound up about what you saw on the news. And that so it's guarding that as well and knowing what kind of things like I've had to learn to 
pace myself, especially with school. Like if I know it's going to be all nighters, either I'm saying ahead of time, I'm probably going to be up all night for a couple of nights, or I need to figure out how to not do that because my husband's waiting for me. Um, and my mother said something to me um, in very first years of marriage. She said one time, when are you slowing down enough to receive your husband? And I was like, well, what exactly does that mean? It meant I'm, I've got so much I'm swirled up in mm -hmm. that if I don't slow down enough, I can't read his signs. We don't kind mm -hmm. of get on the same page. I'm missing that he got the smell good lotion on, right? The, that's the Thursday night lotion, right? That's the, <laughs> that, that's that lotion. You know, that's that conditioning stuff we talk about and we laugh about, but about. we have signals, right? Like I don't have to say nothing. When right, that scent right, walks right, in right. the room, you know what's up. You know what's going down because we yeah. kind of have some, we have some things built in place, but also just that kindness and compassion and even sometimes understanding exhaustion or when there were great intentions, but now we snoring, you know, or, you know, <laughs> or things like that go on. Then we give each other room and we <laughs> out how to steal. That's the love part that yeah, has to be yeah. there. And the connection that says, this is not a reward. It's not punishment. Yeah. We're not withholding sex from right. women. We're not, you know, we're going to be mad and, and acting ugly. Because when you fought and talked ugly and, and acted like the devil, it's, it's <clears throat> hard to get, you know, together. And then you expect to have this loving, beautiful relationship. Wow. Wow. But the right. intimacy is off. And, and, I, and we'll, we'll stop so somebody doesn't say anything. But I think it's also the communication. Uh, we're still young enough. So uh, we have to, you know, kind of deal with, uh, um, my mother used to call it monthlies. That's what my mother would say. So <laughs> and we have to have conversations. My wife is good at saying to me, uh, this is going to start. And you, if, if you got something else in your head, you need to be aware. That kind of stuff, just kind of having conversations. And, and believe it, I'd never been married before. So I didn't know we needed to have to kind of understand that and connect and figure out what we're doing and, and you got and, two days that's right and communicate with one another you yeah, don't want to be stuck and communicate with one another and so when we talk about romance and intimacy i think it's also communication it's yeah. about this connection and yeah, stuff right. and, and and when we get to like i know my wife talks to young ladies i talk married young ladies married uh young men i think that those are things that some people didn't teach us, didn't yeah. tell us, so that we could be kind of be prepared and you figuring it out. I always tell this great story of the, the men's conference right before I got married. Uh, the, the, the men gave me a, a, a reception at the conference and they would come up and they'd shake my hand and they say, you know, uh, Pastor Curry, I've been married 10 years. Pastor Curry, I've been married 20 years. Pastor Curry. And what they were telling me was that uh, you can do it. It can be done. And I didn't realize until year two or three how important that was. Because when things would happen with us, the first thing I'd be like, well, do you want to get a divorce? I mean, I always felt like we were out. We were getting out of here. And my wife would be like, are you really saying that to me? And I had to learn to take that off the table. Right, and right. This is the marriage I'm in. We're going to make this thing work. And we yeah. learned. And we, I mean, I, I don't even have all the time to tell you what I feel we've learned over time, wow. but we continue to explore and figure it out. And we probably talk too much because this is the first time somebody's invited us to do that. <laughs> so, so we, we, we got to wow. give it to you. Uh, the best way we know how. And we don't That's feel like we right. know everything. We, we, we are not those people. We are not the people that think we know everything. <laughs> but we've learned some stuff Amen. and we don't have Amen. a problem. We like what Thessalonians says. Paul says, we loved you so much that we shared our very life with you. Yeah. And we're clear as to what we're not. You know, saying some of this I learned from my wife. Like my wife is not going to tell people too much deep intimacy stuff because she don't want somebody else's wife or some other lady thinking, oh, I want him because he do that. We don't talk like that kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> it is, it, uh, and I just want to make sure, because I know I see the chat, people are like, well, they transparent. We transparent to us. <laughs> we are not going too far. Um, in terms of what we share. But, and, and I had to learn that. I was like, oh, really? Would that happen? Oh, and I learned a lot listening to my wife. Haven't because I don't have the same relationship she has and being able to figure that piece out. But I think it's I, the big piece I want to say is that we're still learning. Yeah. Well, we're going to invite you guys in February where you can get the rest of it out. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, February conference. I just want to add one thing to this uh, 
conversation about sex, about romance, and how things do change. And while sex is very important, we know God created it. It's important in a marriage. It's not the top priority. And this is one thing that we'll learn. Again, the longer we've been married, like you said, our bodies changes, our mind changes. Everything changes. And intimacy is not just in the bed together. I think you all know in 2017 that I was very ill. And there were times during a long period of time that my husband and I were not able to be close. And I was concerned about that. And one time I just asked him, he said, communication is important. And he said, God is taking care of me. God got me. Mm. And so while we know that it's important, it's something as well that concern and care and the way he nurtured me and and looked after me and prayed over me. Look, even though I couldn't, I sure wanted to. (laughs) Because those things are encouraging as well and let you know how much you are loved and cared for. So I think when the question was about having a healthy sex life, it all comes down to knowing that you are loved and cared for. Yeah. And that's very, very, very important because we're going to go through different stages. You're talking about the monthly. We have hot flashes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes oh, like, oh, okay, oh. they touch me right now. Oh, <laughs> this oh, the next oh. 60 seconds. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's hot flash. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and so we grow with each other and we learn <laughs> each other. And it's just very important to keep that love on fire regardless if it's yeah. sex in the bed or like we said a touch mm-hmm. communication or just that ultimate feeling that i know i am cared for right, right. and that goes a long way yeah listen right, let, let me let me interject oh, just one, go ahead. Short, go ahead. Go ahead, one short statement where we can move on to the next one yeah but i think like you know because like i was saying since we are the senior couple here that what happens is uh, where you earlier would get satisfaction out of sex, now just to have a real good hug and mm. a real good closeness and attention. You can be so satisfied yes. with other things right. now that right. years right. ago, right. like, look, yeah. no, no, no. I don't want, I'm not talking about no hugging. Right. People get busy, you know what I mean? I right, exactly. Hug. We're going to hug everything, but I mean, you understand what I'm saying? But now, I mean, now I can hug and I can feel that intimacy. And even when we're out holding hands or even sometimes just looking each other in the eyes, I'll tell some old stupid joke. She laughs at everything I say, you know what I mean? (laughs) I'm just love that, you know what I mean? (laughs) All that crazy stuff. It makes a difference. It That's makes right. a difference. It really does. You hear me? I'm moving on. I'm yielding to you. Oh, that's all right. But listen, what you guys are all saying. He got his jokes, right? Yes, yes. But what you guys are all saying, it's critical. Because I think people don't understand. And when it comes to marriage, this is about, this is about intimacy. is about relationship and friendship. Mm-hmm. Intimacy is not about the physical contact. It's about mm-hmm. relationship and friendship. And some couples, I think, get confused with the idea mm-hmm. of intimacy and romance because they think what they see on TV yeah. and what they see in the movie mm-hmm. and what they see, you know, people do talk about and in and, and, and those moments that that's what needs to happen mm-hmm. and don't realize that what 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 is it what really makes the marriage strong is the fact that we grow in this relationship and friendship mm-hmm. to the point that I'm so confident that you got my back no matter right. what. Right. <laughs> no matter what that you know we i knew the phrase ride ride or die i know that's what you are for me well, that's right you know and whether i'm up or whether i'm down whether i'm in right. or whether i'm out there's one person i can count on and that's you that's it that's it and and, and sometimes people and you we want that but then we don't do what we need to do to get that yeah. right right <laughs> you know right. we want that ride or die we mm-hmm. want that relationship but, right. but like karima said we do it by getting mad. We do it by mm-hmm. arguing. We do it by criticizing. We do it by telling them what they ain't doing for me. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and then you you criticize and put them down. Then you expect them to turn around and be what you want after you done humiliated them. Right, right. <laughs> and it and don't that, work that way. And, and Pastor Beckley, may I say what you're saying also reminds me it's a 
interpen, interdependence. Yes. God brings us get individually together. Yes, to ma'am. One, but it's not codependent. Right. It's exactly. not you are my whole world and I have nothing else in life but you. Yeah. It is not that that's because right. that's a tremendous amount of pressure yeah. to put God's responsibility on your spouse. You can't do that they they no. have to be your everything. They have to make you happy. They can't go anywhere. No. You don't go. Mm -hmm. They can't have friends yeah. and you don't have, you know, your, your whole world. And there's fear that they're going to abandon you. That yeah. makes the whole thing unhealthy. And all of that ends up translating into an unhealthy intimacy and can impact yeah. uh, the romance. Yeah, it becomes control. Yeah. Now yeah. you're using yeah. the yes, relationship, yes. romance, yes. intimacy, sex as control. Oh, and right. and that, that can't be the case no. if we're going to grow together. You know, it is healthy for us to have outside relationships outside of our marriage but also realize that there's an intimate relationship that takes place within the marriage. And as uh, Pastor Weaver said, I agree. Uh, as it, it, I'm, I'm not the best jokester, but when it comes to, you know, preaching, I feel like my wife think I'm the best preacher in the world. She might like you, Beckley. She might like you, Weaver, but she going to think that I'm the best. And <laughs> even when I feel like it wasn't the best of sermon, right. to, yeah. to be encouraged and to know, I think that those things are building blocks towards intimacy and connection and all of that stuff. And it makes it, you know, where uh, you, and as you learn each other, you know, I know when we go on vacation, she gonna overpack, I am too. And I gotta make sure her stuff gets to where it needs to go to, right? <laughs> right, and right. No problem. No. I know her. And so right. it, I, I'm not mad because, you know, when people start talking about they mad about this, I be like, well, then you don't know your wife. You already should have known that. I mean, I'm eight years here now. I know that, and I work with what I know. And there if we go. build, if we build relationship, romance, intimacy, all that other stuff comes. Yeah, what First Peter reminds us: go with them according to knowledge. That's right, man. Amen. Amen. That's right, man. And, and, and he's gonna have my bags in the airport. <laughs> yeah. Amen. And he's not gonna be mad about it. No go go Why he them. used to be all frustrated? <laughs> Why did. you pack all that stuff? Why you dragging all that stuff? Yeah. Now he got the little scale. He's like, "This is how much your, your thing weigh. Are you gonna be able to carry all that?" And I'll say yes. And then we get to the airport, and it's no. And he still helped me because he know how I am <laughs> and know. who I am, and Amen. he's not trying and, to and, change yeah. me. Bible says Maybe. we need to dwell with each other according to mm -hmm. knowledge. You need to know your spouse. And yeah. you need to know your spouse for who they are, not comparing mm -hmm. them to who somebody That's else. Amen. <laughs> That's right. That's good. You need to know them for who they are. <laughs> Amen. So listen, the next question talks about what makes marriage successful. And I think we've talked about that already. Mm -hmm. We've addressed that in terms of the things that we've said and the things that we've talked about. We kind of alluded to the fact that what do you do when you have disagreements? Mm -hmm. And when you don't disagree, you kind of, you, 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 you communicate, you work through those things and, and listen, and you come to, I think the key to working through disagreements is a mutual respect for one another, mm -hmm. a respect that you recognize your spouse for the person they are, not for the person you trying to mold them into being. Right. Right. That's and good. then you learn how to respect their opinions and recognize that God has given them to you. As I think Ken said so well, to make you even better than where you're at, where you are. Mm -hmm. right. Because the goal of this is like what Proverbs says, as iron sharpens iron, so does man mm -hmm. sharpen the continents of his friend. Mm -hmm. If you truly interact in terms of friendship, intimacy, the way we've been talking about, it makes you better. Right, right. It causes you also, to grow I and it helps also, you become mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. you want to become. The, the next mm -hmm. question says, and, and I guess we can kind of uh, jump into this one. There's two of them. They're kind of dissimilar. It says, why can't men understand how women that women know how to make smart decisions as well and then the next question is kind of similar to that how does a man notice that his wife is all he has mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a, i think i think that that's individual relationship uh, yeah. i i i always dated smart uh, smart was attractive to me. And yeah. so I had to also learn with dating smart and that women can make decisions. I had to learn that uh, specifically for my wife, that her thinking process is different than mine. Right. And I had to be able to appreciate it and understand it. I, I'm big on self-awareness. I understand me. And so in marriage, I've got to understand her. If we won, I need to be able to kind of pull that up. And so some of that stuff, the longer we're married, it doesn't surprise me. I kind of I can almost anticipate how she's going to work this thing out. It doesn't mean I still don't get frustrated or wish it were another way. I understand it, though. And so that's important. 
Um, I also think, so I think that, that, that it would be situational. I, for each yeah. man, I would hope that uh, the, the husband, the brother would be able to figure out the decisions that his wives make and why, and realize that I know that my wife can make a decision. I say this all the time to Karima. I say, look, I need you. I need to know if something happened to me, you know how to take care of it. I, I can't, I'm not, I don't know everything. And I have to share things so that in the event something happens to me, she knows how I want it to be taken care of. I can't just have it all up here in my head and it doesn't get to her head and her heart. So that if something happened and COVID teaches you that I've made a lot of new decisions based on COVID yeah. that I didn't, just because we didn't know what could happen if I got it, if, if would I end up in the hospital, um, you know, anything like that. So I, I need, I believe in her enough for her to be able to, to, to know that uh, and, and share that uh, accordingly. That's powerful. Yeah, I would I would add into that too yes, that um, uh, you know being from a different generation mm -hmm. that a lot of things that for my generation and generation before me we are so accustomed to the man really doing a lot of things making sure his family's provided for making sure his wife is provided for making sure the home is provided for so like for our generation we really have to work at those things what pastor curry was saying we got to work at those things of uh, making sure we're translating that information into uh our wives and into our families and trying to make sure that we're preparing them uh because things have changed so much now where Yes. You know, we used to write checks. Now everybody paying bills online, you know, but now it's still some old school folk writing checks still. Now don't fool yourself, you know, <laughs> yeah, and there's some old school yeah. folk ain't using yeah. no ATMs yeah. and stuff. So I'm saying things have changed and we have to change yeah. with that. And we have to make an effort to do better. Me and my wife, we, we're talking about some things in the season that we're in that for sure, I have to do some things better you know, in terms of preparing her for, you know, if I'm not taking care of certain things, you know, and so, so I understand that totally. Now, the question where is when will men get uh, it in their head that I'm all you have? Well, I'm, I don't know if I could ever get that in my head, because <laughs> the thing about it is, I, I, I truly lean on God. That's and right. I'm not trying to be over spiritualized that I'm not trying to make your question unspiritual. But the fact is, I lean on God first yes. because I know that he's not only endowed me, but he's endowed her. That's and right. I know her spiritual maturity, her spiritual level. And I know that God wants me to lean on him. But then I do realize, and I heard Karima say this, and I've heard that I know she has my back. That's right. And just like Kareem would think Pastor Curry, the best preacher, my wife thinks the same thing. That's amen. Right. And so, amen. I, if I ain't got nobody else, I got one amen. I bring my own witness. I bring my own witness. I bring my own witness. Own with me. Amen. And so, you know, that's the fact about it. You need that support. You need that encouragement. You need, but you you have to you have to feel confident in the fact that you know God has you as well as he has her. Yes. And the both of you have to be leaning on him. Uh -huh. uh, and I think that question might go deeper than what I'm hearing. Yeah, and I'm just not trying to, yeah, I'm not trying to right. formulate that for you. Yeah. But if it's something that you feel unvalued, that's the word yeah. I would use. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you feel unvalued, then I think it's something that has to be discussed between the two of you and you have to communicate that to him that I don't feel you value me and then maybe discuss where he can tell you how he does or show you how he does and right, right. maybe take some baby steps to determine how does one value I value my wife's opinion you know we have different opinions about stuff just like the rest of y'all you know but we did she's a woman I'm a man so you know yeah. that right there makes a difference you know yeah. The one thing that I would like to offer in this situation is, again, we talked about dwelling with each other according to knowledge. Right. Like you said, we come from different generations. There are some times when a man may not want to hear your opinion or your mm -hmm. advice. True. There was a situation mm -hmm. that I was trying to tell my husband some things. 
Mm -hmm. And the Lord clearly told me to be quiet about that situation. I heard that this is clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what I learned is, it's not that he didn't value me, but there are some times that we have to be the word I always like to use is discerning, discerning Mm -hmm. when Mm -hmm. to let them know that I have this smart answer or I can contribute to our decision making. We got to learn when it's okay to say something. And so I, I think sometimes, and we women have to admit this, sometimes we may offer our opinion or advice mm-hmm. and they don't want it. Mm-hmm. So I've got to learn when it's okay. And what I got to the place of, I like now because he'll ask me for my mm-hmm. input and mm-hmm. ask me for my wisdom so I don't have to force it. And even though I know I'm not all that he has, but the fact that he will ask me for my opinion or my advice weighs uh, heavily with me. So I think sisters, we have to get to the point where we can't make them understand that we have good decisions, but pray, be discerning to know when you can come in and offer information. Because like we talked about early, your man is your man. And whereas my man may want me to say whatever I want to say, when I want to say it, how I want to say it, your man may want you not to say something. He don't want to hear it. He don't want the whole details of what he should do, what he shouldn't do, and say this, don't say that, do this. And sometimes, ladies, we have to just let our pure and chaste behavior. There it is. Get them to the point <laughs> where they want to hear us. And I there know that's is. not easy to hear, but you dwell with and your man according to knowledge and give uh, him the opportunity to want to hear from you. And I think God will open that door when we use uh, discernment. Yeah. I- uh, Ms. Karima, I'm going I'm to jump in, then I'll let you say, because I know you want to say yeah. something. But in, in concert with what you said, that same passage that talks about dwell with them according to knowledge, it also tells a woman to, do, uh, to, to win him uh, without a word by your chase and behavior. That's right. yeah. and, and that's what my wife just said. And, and, and one of the things ladies need to realize that you talking at us don't get our attention as much as your behavior. Mm-hmm. So we watch you. Men are visual. We watch. We watch how you interact. We watch how you deal, even in the presence of other men. We watch how you carry yourself. And so your behavior says much to us. You can talk to me all day long. But in my mind, if I see your behavior contradicting what you said, I'm going to go with your behavior. And so you can win me by your behavior. If your behavior is consistent and you walk in and conduct yourself in a manner that shows you support, care and respect me. Nine times out of ten, my response to you is going to be wanting to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And Mr. our yeah. our Christian marriage is a sacred marriage that's different from secular uh, hey, marriages, but it's also different from how we um, uh, encounter things in the secular world. So we have to be careful, as uh, I, I will say, as as a woman. Not to also project onto our husbands the issues of society in the rest of the world. Oh, so, right. if, uh, if on my job they are inequitable, unfair, they want to shut me down, I have to be the power player in the room. I can't take that home Amen. and then project that on my husband as on, though man. he's my enemy. Again, back to he's not my enemy. Right. He's also not my coworker. He's not my boss. He's not all the men in the United States. He's not the oppressor. He's Come not, on, you know, on. so all of that stuff can weigh so heavily on us in areas that we we do not need to bring home or we need to compartmentalize it and put it where it belongs. And then it's challenging sometimes to shift when you're a decision maker on your job. If yeah. you're a power player yeah. in the workplace as a woman, then you have a shift to make, whether you like it or not, the word is still the word and the husband is the head. And so if we submit to our husbands, we don't want to say that either. We don't want to say anything that the world has told us is not politically correct, right? But when I'm home, I gotta submit. 
And sometimes submission means listening. Yeah. It means biting my tongue. Yeah. It means taking a deep breath and counting to 10. It means my, mm -hmm. not just trying to convince you that my rationale or my way is the right way. And I'm gonna keep talking because I've had to learn to stop doing this. I'm just gonna keep convincing you because yeah. Yeah. I, I'm smart, right? So why wouldn't you think like me? So <laughs> what, what's really happening is I need to keep talking to remind you why you should think like me. Yeah. Right? And all that can lead to is shut down from him, mm. conflict. Mm. Let now we we now we in two separate spaces, even if it's attitude, mm. silence, or whatever it ends up in with conflict. But we must be careful that some of those little foxes that come to destroy the vine, yeah. that some of that is not our everyday world and fight in the secular space that we can sometime, if we're not careful, bring into our intimate sacred space. Yeah. And remember that we learn from each other. Yeah, we do. There, there are things that we learn. My wife, you know, works a job and all that stuff that she got articulated, but there's so much she learns from watching me pastor and lead and do. And she'll say, you know, I hadn't thought about that. Or yeah. we'll talk about maybe a leader at her job. She says there's a different perspective. So it's mutual learning. We yeah. learn from one another. Oh, yeah, and we build about. the relationship and then we use what we get from each other in our respective spaces. Amen. I just wanted Amen. to interject. Just a Go ahead, Mr. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Just a bit. It's something Sister Linda had brought out. It's about prayer. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of times, uh, my husband uses sometimes, and he'll say, you know, you over-spiritualize. You over-spiritualize. But I believe in prayer. <laughs> and and, and I, I, I know Amen. God answers prayer. Amen. And he sometimes, does. lady, when we want to say all this and that, Go to your room or go yeah. wherever you pray and just let it all out on God. <laughs> That's right. Oh, Lord, That's right. You hear what he said? You know, you know, and I talk to the Lord. Yeah. And you know what? I don't have to say nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Word. God can yeah. handle our conversation. That's right. Because what to say and what not to say. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And you know, I have heard my husband say this to me. It's been many years ago since he said it, but I always remembered this. And he said to me, Oh, so you've been praying on me, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he'll say, Oh, yeah, I could feel it. I could feel it. <laughs> I don't have to say nothing. Right. Hey. Well, the, Lord, the Lord works those types. Type of things out. Yeah. That's right. He does. Yes, he does. Ago, if we let him. If we let him. Some years ago, I'm gonna let you guys all up into our living room. I remember some years ago, I must have got upset. I said to myself, I'm going to get up and get out of here. And I was fixing to go out, and I don't know what I was. I, was, I don't know what I was fixing to do. I was fixing to do something <laughs> stupid, really. But <laughs> I was fixing to get up and get out. I fooled around, got in my car, drove out the driveway. I'm, I guess I was hot as fish grease. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm I'm driving around. All I did was drove around the block about five times and came back home. <laughs> I must be at home praying, Lord, what? <laughs> I couldn't even take the car in a different direction. I'm trying, to go this way. I'm trying to go that way. I'm like, Lord, but prayer. That's right. Prayer, folks. I'm saying hey. prayer makes the difference. <laughs> prayer works. You know, I'm always reminded. Prayer works. I'm always reminded of Ephesians, of what it says there when we're talking to each other and with communication where it says, let no unwholesome words yeah. come on. Come out of your mouth, yeah. proceed out of your mouth, except that which is good for edification. Come on. Edification, that Amen. word means building up, encouraging, means moving from one way, one place to another place, something that's going to be a building block. He said, and don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. So see, when we start talking all crazy and giving all these our own opinions that's not God's opinion and actions and activities that are ungodly because we're looking at too much of this stuff on TV where people are cussing each other out, acting a fool. And I'm like, you know, this is not what marriage is meant to be, not biblical marriage. Yeah, that's yeah, right. that's so right. we, are, we are grieving the Holy Spirit. We're grieving God by our actions and our activities and our behavior, but we don't see that. Yes. We just think that we got it off our chest. But God said, no, you might have got it off your chest, but guess where it landed? It didn't always land on the person you wanted it to, 
or it didn't land in the place you thought it was. But guess what? It landed right at the throne. Yeah, Amen. absolutely. It landed at the throne. That's the key. You, I'm your daddy. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> and so guess what happens? Now, I, I, I'm the one in it. You know, because they say, yeah. you know, marriage is a triangle. Come on. Come on. Figure now. it out for yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's a triangle. I think, I think one of the things we take for granted too often is the power of prayer. Yeah. Power yeah. of prayer. We, I think we do, Sister Weaver. You're absolutely right. We, mm -hmm. we we tend to resort to our own ingenuities and our own mm -hmm. thinking before we would go to pray. Right. And really, prayer should be our first resort. Yeah. We're means. finding ourselves coming up against a difficulty or a challenge mm -hmm. in our marriage. Mm -hmm. Rather than try to fight through it, we need to hit our knees and pray through it. Right. And right. watch God change our hearts. And, you know, and, my, and, and mm -hmm. so that's really a, a, mm -hmm. a blessing. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for that. We're, we're going to get a little deeper into this uh, before we get into some light things, because this question is a question that that probably a lot of folks are dealing with in their marriages today, especially in this liberal society. The question is, is it possible to save a marriage after cheating has happened? Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot I'm finding a lot of marriages, especially in the younger generation, are dealing with infidelity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and older ones as well, mm -hmm. but they, it's becoming more, it seems to be mm -hmm. coming more of what is the norm rather than the abnormal. Wow. So the question is, mm -hmm. is it possible yes. to save a marriage after cheating has happened? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll dive in there since I'm ahead, a sir. senior statesman on that, that um, I, I truly believe that it is possible. Yes. And I know it's possible because I've seen the possibilities with some couples that I've worked with, yeah. uh, not in all situations. Yeah. But see, what happens is um, a lot of times we don't want to make the investment in order what it takes in order to get to a place other than where we are. And I mean, it it's it's a difficult situation. It's a difficult matter because people have in situations like that, not only is the individual wounded, but when everybody else finds out about it, you yeah. know, you got a bunch yeah. of wounded folks. Yeah. And so they add to the conflict a lot of time because there's shame there, there's humility there, wow. and it goes deeper than the layers that a person can peel back. Right. Because it's hurt that you can't see, mm -hmm. and it's hurt that others really can't feel that you wow. feel. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, Yes, it can take place, but guess what? It takes a, 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 a strong commitment and a long-term investment. Yeah. Yes. And I, what I would say is with that investment, that means uh, in order for, because if it happened once, it can't happen again. Yeah, yeah. And so you, it, it, it's not like you want to roll the dice and say, look, I don't want to crap out again. I'm, if I give them another chance, what's the possibility? Yeah. And so with that being said, um, that means that there needs to be counseling. That means that there needs to be uh, boundaries set up. You know, that means that there needs to be a commitment on both parts that we want to work it out. Because, see, let me say this. And I mean, I can cut the, through the chase on somebody right here. If you don't want it to work out, it's not going to work out. Work. That's right. Good. So point. now, if you if you really love your husband or you really love your wife and so on and so forth, and uh, you want it yeah. to work and you want to make that investment, yeah. it can work out. But if you don't, you will put the blinders on yourself. You will put the wall up yourself. You will do everything that you you really want to do in order to make it not work. Yeah. So uh, you have to make that decision. Nobody can make that decision for you. But I would say to you. As my wife so eloquently stated, Josh so eloquently supported that it really begins with prayer. Yeah. And that means it begins with prayer where God has to speak to your heart. Yeah. God has to do some healing with you because you're not going to be able to move forward if you don't feel like you at least have the support of God. And so don't let everybody else speak into your life. <laughs> yeah. You know what they're going to speak. I knew the Negro wasn't no good from the get-go. Yeah. Yeah. I tried yeah. to tell you that 20 yeah. years yeah. ago right. when you married him. Yeah. You know? But now yeah. they've been married 20 years and he possibly been faithful or she been faithful or whatever it is. That yeah. Everybody always have, when a person mess up, everybody always can find a, a bad perception of them yeah. afterwards. Yeah. yeah. 
Because and, some and, people told my wife, basically, oh, yeah. we've been married 40 years. Yeah. Look, you don't want to be messing with him. Mm-hmm. And I'm about to say, well, maybe she don't, you know? <laughs> yeah, maybe she don't. You don't know my past. You know what I mean? But see, God, God. God. he can save mm-hmm. a thief on a cross. Yeah. Come on, he, come on, come preacher. on, preacher. Come, come on, now y'all don't. Come on, you gonna me. preach now? Right here, <laughs> no, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, come on now. I'm just telling you. Yeah, you're right. God can change things. Yeah. The person I didn't even think I could be, I am today. That's right. Yeah. Come on. I'm just telling you like it is. Yeah. And then when God puts a jewel in your life, you you don't. I mean, come on. You gonna look better just because of the jewel. That's right. You gonna do better. And so yeah. that's important for us to understand, folks. So I hope I didn't take too much time. Oh, no, that's, 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 that's right there. Go on, Pastor you know. Curry. I know you want to say something. Yeah. yeah, I just want to add to that that that, that idea that Pastor Weaver brought brings up about how much you share outside. Yeah. When, when those situations happen, right. you need trusted voices. You don't need to tell everybody. I've seen it where somebody tells everybody because they want they want their their spouse to look bad in everybody's eyes. Some stuff you got to keep to one or two voices. That's it. And 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 you have to already be clear what your heart is, who you are, and whose you are. You belong to God and allow him to work in your marriage. I've seen marriages redeemed. Mm-hmm. Some, some, some places where I didn't think they were going. And I've seen where the wife has cheated and where the husband has cheated. Right, in different right. situations. So it's not just because of the yeah. man... All types of stuff happens, and I'm not giving excuses. I'm just saying things happen. And people that are determined to stay married, not just for the kids, but for mm-hmm. marriage sake, for promise sake, for covenant sake, they, the they will yeah. work through mm-hmm. those things. Mm-hmm. You're going to need a good counselor. Mm-hmm. You're, right. not gonna need yeah, mar- You're, You're not going to just need You're not going to just need uh marriage counseling. You need individual counseling. Yes, sir. You need to, and the spouse that offended needs individual counseling to pinpoint why, what, what was wrong yes. in them that needs to be addressed. And, and marriages can be worked worked out. These difficulties can be worked out. But I'm going to say this. Don't start telling your mama and your your, your daddy oh, you know, yeah. already don't yeah. like them. Because they'll feed and they'll get, they'll, now they'll put their stuff in. And then here's the other thing. You're going you gonna to get past it, right? Yeah. They, they'll they not. They ain't not past it. No. Some stuff. And my wife really told me that there's some stuff we don't be telling everybody. And right. Even in, in, in the conflicts we have, we have to figure out how to work those things out. Or we, right. we know we're going to talk, but we can't be telling everybody. And then folk look, because I've looked at people and said, well, I know all their business, how they right. acting like they together. Mm-hmm. See, that kind of stuff doesn't work. We have to right. lock arms back to intimacy and, and connection and communication lock on and then we have to work through these things together marriages can come back from a whole lot of stuff yeah. and, and and we uh you know we we start to put on this stuff well if if they do this or if they do that then you can leave so there and there's scripture for some of that but the truth of the matter is back to what sister weaver said and 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 and, and pastor beckley that god can do a whole lot of stuff i want my my theological belief, my spiritual belief is God can fix anything. Yes, he can amen. heal anything. Amen. He can turn amen. anything around. And that includes in marriages. And we've got to be willing to submit to that and trust God can do it. Now, if in that situation he doesn't, that's a whole nother thing. Wow. But if, if, if our perspective is, God, I'm going to invite you into this space. My heart is broken. Mm-hmm. I'm hurting. Yes. I need you to help me fix this yes. and help us in this. Then we give God to work with. Now, you might have an unrepentant spouse that they're going to do whatever they want to do. And then there's a whole lot of other safety issues. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. That's but when you all are willing to work through this, I say at least give it a chance. And not for the sake of your kids. Right. Your kids <laughs> do need their parents together, especially if you have minor kids. But for the sake of your own relationship and wholeness and 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 your relationship with God, uh, you, you, we, we say he's a redeemer, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, yeah. right in the darkness. The, the, those kind of issues is where that comes to truth. That's where that comes from. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 And listen, and, and, and as we talk about this issue of, 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 of cheating and what's needed and necessary, the next question asks, is there a time when two Christians should part from each other? When there is no trust, no intimacy, little communication, uh, much more love is very low and criticism is very, very, very hard. 
Is there a time when Christians should part from each other? Uh, I don't believe you could part until there's some, been some counseling that you've tried to work through all the issues that you need to work through. And, mm -hmm. and, and then at that point, the only reason parts in Cape Fake is one is not willing to do the work that's needed to keep you together. But, mm -hmm. but again, you just don't drop it just because they are not doing it. You work through it. The right. goal of it is, is I think the answer to you for the first question on cheating is this answer to this one, counseling. You need some real good, serious counselors who can work you both individually as well as collectively. Bible says in a multitude of counselors, there's safety. And so therefore it's important for us to reconcile our differences by going through counseling. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and it takes two. It takes two people to work on. You can't do it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. Amen. And, and again, the Bible tells us that if you got an unbelieving spouse that want to stay with you, let them stay. Right. If they don't want to stay, you can't make them stay. No, you can't. Yeah. That's first Corinthians. <laughs> That's first Corinthians right there. Yeah, you That's can't. That's the Bible. That's, That's the Bible. Corinthians. You can't make yeah. them stay. You can yeah. do everything you can, but if they determine mm -hmm. to get out, God to you in peace. You you, you have go. peace because you, you can't make them stay. Them go. But the question mm -hmm. is that I would like to hear some answers to is what if the believer wants, wants to out. leave? Yo, that's the question mm -hmm. now. So if there's yeah. no intimacy, no communication, he's not treating me right, what or she not treating him right, whatever it is, what if the believer wants out? That's interesting. When I hear this question, um, latent almost in that question are, here are the problems. Can we get out now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it sounds like, doesn't it? Versus, and, and I could be reading into it, but my question would be, God, what do we need to work on? All these things I just listed before we get to, so can we get out now? Mm -hmm. Have we tried to work right. on loving? Have we yeah. tried to or address um, if there's disrespect there or right. lack That's of, because none of those things indicate, in my opinion, deal breakers for the no. believer. They represent challenge. Mm -hmm. And not everybody's marriage is going to be the same smooth road or rocky right. road. There right. are some people who will have challenging marriages because they got challenging circumstances or things yeah. that have to be worked out over time. And not everybody connects at the same time in their journey of transformation. But God, we, I mean, we just talked about God can fix and change anything. Yeah. We um, have a, a, a wives class um, and we were studying, uh, there's two books, Power of the Praying Wife, which goes through 31 Mm -hmm. 31 specific areas to pray for your husband. Wow. 31. Wow. To focus 31. <laughs> 31. I keep saying because as we break them down, they cover, every, day month. Oh, they God, cover yeah. every area. <laughs> wow. But every time we went to the book, it came back to us. I was like, why the lesson about me again? I thought this was power of the praying wife for him because it comes back to God fix me first. What transformation needs to happen? And what if God doesn't change in the moment we think he is yeah. or the way he is, the spouse, yeah. he can still change me for the situation. He can teach me when to be quiet. He can teach me when to speak. He can teach me how to love when my heart is hard mm -hmm. and when I'm hurt or offended or those deep rooted things, including family and generational stuff that we carry mm -hmm. on and learn from mama and daddy and grandma and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Things we have to unlearn, uh, things we have to surrender to the altar. So the question for me is, did all that work happen? Are mm -hmm. we ready to leave? Because it looks bad, feels bad but we haven't pieced apart, are we both willing to work there? And then one may not be willing to do the work and they have a choice. Are they leaving? Yeah. And if they're not leaving and we stand, are we going to stay and complain? Are we going to stay and do the, the prayer fight? Come on now. If we stay and I'm going to be fighting. Come on. I, like I, just, I just believe that God is going to fix something, whether he fixes it in me or whether that person is left to their own devices and, and, and it works out and maybe it doesn't work out the way we dreamed it would. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but God is still going to fix something if we go to him. Right. Amen. I like what you said when you said that those situations are not a deal breaker. And I think that's what the person who 
ask the question needs to see that no intimacy, little communication, they're not deal breakers for the Christian. And so if you are the Christian and you may be putting up with those things, you may want to leave, like you said, you're tired of fighting, but we have to get that armor on and know how to stay in the fight and keep doing our part and see what God is going to do. Because we don't know, we can't put God on a timetable yeah. of how long we want him to fix something. That's key. Yeah. And tell him if it's not fixed by right. this time, right. then right. I'm out. Right. The thing right. is, right. that may be the yeah. cup that God wants you to drink right. from. Right. And right. that's right. where he puts right. you. Right. For your okay. sake and whatever he wants to grow in you or prune yeah. you, whatever God wants to do, we yeah. got to stay where he's planted us in order that we become who he wants us to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's hard work. Yeah. I just hard wanted to work. say to um, my sisters um, what all they're saying, you know, because um, we know that we can't change anything. We, Come on now. We, we, it's, it's not, it's sometimes you even marry a person in a certain condition and you feel like, well, you know, when they get with me, I could change them. Uh, they ain't going to church now, but guess what? When they get with <laughs> me, uh, they come into oh, church Lord. with me because they want to be with me. Sometimes it's just the front just to get <laughs> you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> That's so, the wrong evangelism. You know yeah. what? I, I just go right back, right back to my prayer. Just like I said, just go right back right to back my to prayer. prayer. And guess what? God can change them. Mm -hmm. God can change them. No matter what the situation is, God can change them if that's God's will. Uh -huh. yeah. see, that's another thing we have to realize with our will may not be God's will. Mm -hmm. You want to do what God would mm -hmm. have you to do. Mm -hmm. And I was listening, even before I married my husband, I was listening to these women. It's not even men. They were, they were men that, you know, were saying different things and you... They you wanted know. her. <laughs> <laughs> I should not be with you him. You got it. You he right. Said, he's that, you know. But guess what I did? <laughs> I went to, to God in prayer. Is this the man I should have? You know, I, I wanted to know from the Lord. I really did. I wanted did, to know man. God. Is that the, you know, and he was the one. He was the one. And he had 40 years I'm still here. counting. <laughs> and, still you know, here. So no matter what the situation mm -hmm. is, you know, mm -hmm. if it's God's will. But yeah. you want to, you yeah. do want to ask God. You know, they say you have not because what? You don't ask. Yeah. Yeah. You, no, don't ask. you right. have not because you ask or not. You know, mm -hmm. and that's a lot of times we don't do. We don't ask. We don't ask. Oh, man. Let, let me add something to that, though. Go, um, go ahead, sir. Um, you, 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 like what she said is, is so true that you can't change a person because, you know, you just can't do that. But I do want to add in here to somebody who's listening today that you can influence change. Mm -hmm. You can influence change by That's the way good. you yourself behave. Mm -hmm. You That's can good. influence change. And I, I love what uh, Sister Beckley said about time, mm -hmm. that I know one period in our marriage that we went through, we went through, I would say, you know, a few years of a tough time in our marriage, but we didn't give up. We, we, we stuck together and we stayed through that. And sometimes you, like, uh, uh, like uh, Sister Beckley said, you just have to put the whole armor of God on. <laughs> and you have to fight your way through some things. <laughs> and you have to have a determination that I'm not going to let the devil get this victory. And I am going to be an overcomer in this. And that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And that we can do all things through Christ. And that we are going to have victory. And Amen. we're going to just stick to what we made the commitment to the two becoming one. And sometimes that is very difficult. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, you have to ask yourself, not what your husband's made of, not what your wife's made of, but the question is, what are you made you of? Made of. Yeah. What on, are you man. made of? How far will you go? How there determined you go, are you? Not for your husband, not for your children, but for the kingdom's mm -hmm. sake. Yeah. If you fail, it's it's a, it's an indictment against every single uh, that's on here tonight, and against all of us that's speaking. It's yeah, an yeah. indictment against us. Yes, it is. And I'm saying that. Guess what? You can do it, but yeah. you know what? 
you're going to, I think you're going to have to take a different approach. Mm -hmm. And let me say this, and then I, I promise I'll quit. We are too often influenced by others. And we yeah. see others' marriages and we compare it, but you don't yeah, know come on behind now. closed doors. Somebody yeah. on the job then told you you look That's cute. Right. Come on That's now. right. That's and right. Told you, you look cute on the job. Your husband ain't told you that in three months. Now all of a sudden your head swole up. We come on, come on, preach it. Oh, come on now. You know what I mean? Come on. So you got to watch yourself. God, you yes. You handsome, and they trying to fix your tie on the job. You better let somebody keep come that. On. That's right. you know, come on. That's right. Come on. You don't know who's where them hands been. <laughs> and if them hands is working for the devil. Come come on. That's right. That's right. right. I'll try my wife to fix my tie. That's right. right. I better stop. That's good stuff. And it is. And the grass is not always greener on the other side. Come on. These other people's marriages, I know. Yeah, come people, on. Look people look great in church, and it'd be a whole other thing yeah. at home. And online. Yeah. Yeah. And online. That's online. That's online food. Yeah. That's right. People well, tell come on now. They, they can fix know. up any picture. Yeah. 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 And tell a great story. Oh, there's, yeah. there's three sides to the story. There's his side, her side, and there's God's side. Right. And we all tell our side of the story based on how we think That's things right. went yes. on. We and to look who good. wins me some favor, right? right. The truth is, I don't tell the story to make me look bad. Right. right, and so right. everyone is doing that. We have to be careful yeah. about what we're feeding into. That's right, That's right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Well, well, Amen. ladies and gentlemen, I want to be faithful to our time. Amen. Amen. And our time is about we got about maybe uh, eight minutes left in this mm -hmm. segment this morning. Okay. And listen, and the last segment kind of deals with the aspect of dating mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. I'm just going to ask us if we can to just kind of answer briefly and quickly. Some of them I'm going to ask just for a, a one word answer. For, for let, let, and let me run through them real quick. And then also I'll ask you to expound on some. Uh, is dating biblical? Yes or no? Yes. I agree. Yes. I agree. Dating is biblical. Mm -hmm. I, think, mm -hmm. I think you need to date to find out. The goal of dating, the problem I think with dating is we think, think it's a marriage and it's not marriage. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> it's like the world's dating. We got to do right. Christian dating. You can't, you can't. Yeah. Because and, I think dating and, and this ain't a bachelor or bachelorette. No. There you go. No, no. not that. Not that. Yeah. Not that. No, yeah. no because but, are Christians supposed to in, get engaged and have courtship? Yes. yes. Bible yes. talks about engagement you need talk about joseph was a spouse to right. marry right. Yeah. And listen and and the, and back in the day the family chose that but the purpose of the espousement was to get to know each other right and right. to get to learn each other and get prepared for what you're going to enter into in terms of marriage i often used to teach when i was in youth group that the bible talks about friendship engagement and marriage right <laughs> so so yeah. so the aspect of dating biblically is not found but i think dating is the aspect of where friendship is friendship. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. Become and, you, friends. Mm -hmm. and in that as soon as you realize what the relationship is or is not get out if get it's out. not going to move right. forward right. get out yeah. Um, yeah. we yeah. have the story mm -hmm. of having dated we dated three times uh, uh the <laughs> third time is what worked but the reason we kept going back is because there was something there Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think we retreated. We came back. We retreated. We came back. I think that you can't. A lot of people get into these things long term. Yeah. And then they can't get out. Can't get right. out. Yeah. Red flags. Get out. And that yeah, was because, they, because, because like again, they done years. made decisions. Yeah, we weren't dating for years. We weren't dating yeah. for years. Yeah. And 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 I think the reason they can't get out is because they made decisions in the dating stage that was right. that were supposed to be for marriage. That's right, 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 right. That's right. And, looking, right. and looking for the intimacy of marriage in dating, and it's yes. not going to happen. I don't care if you're living together, sleeping mm -hmm. together. I don't care what you're doing. You're right. not going to get marriage, and you're intimacy. definitely not going to get God's favor over a sacred marriage no, in a dating relationship. Yeah. And sometimes that's what we're, uh, I'll speak for women, that emotional connection we're looking for. We're looking for that intimacy that comes through the bond of marriage. There it's it is. not going to be that in dating because yeah. no, that's not, not where it belongs that's not, not going to happen no. yeah the next question says this it says how long can you entertain a long distance marriage relationship. a long distance relationship rather it says how long should you uh entertain a long distance uh, distance relationship she says it's been two years already Ooh. and should we wait be patient or call it quits or move on mm. 
Well, first, long what, is the, what does the Lord say and what is the goal? That's the I question, remember huh? someone saying, you don't go to school without the goal of getting a degree. What is right. the purpose? You're not just there just to hang out and take classes. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the point of the dating? Are you talking about moving towards each other together? What is the Lord saying? Are you doing any counseling to come together? Is there a plan? Is there a timeline? Right. And that might be some of my kind of organizational stuff. But I think there, there has to be some, some serious thought that goes, right. everything's not just emotional. It's just going to yeah. blow up and happen. Right. Right. What are we doing? Uh, well, we either going to break up or we going to get together. It's one okay. of them two things. Bottom line. So, I, when I somebody somebody, it, somebody I need to say what their intentions are. Yes. Yes. What, what's the intentions in this? That's right. I mean, after you've been there two years, you... You know, you 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 you. A lot of time can be wasted in situations like yeah. that if I don't know your intentions. Yeah. And then What's your it's motive? always What's your easier. Purpose? It's always easier to talk over the phone than it is to yeah. do in person. Face to face. See, when you in person, you you, you learn the real person. Yeah. yeah. But see, it's easy to say a bunch of sweet stuff over the phone. phone. You know what I mean? You yeah. Got, you got have some, to live it out some, every some day. Show going in the That's back right. Feeding every you day. lines to say. But the fact is, you you really, you know, you really have to look at the intentionality of the whole situation. That's right. Because, you know, long term can turn into longer term and longer term. <laughs> and then you end up, you know, wasted five years. Five years. Life. That's right. The person just say, well, you know, um, I'm sorry. And you're heartbroken and yeah. now you got to heal. And now it's yeah. more time that's got to yeah. go. And now you got to yeah. deal with baggage for somebody mm -hmm. else. That's too much. My prayer at some point in, in, in dating before uh, Pastor and I got together was, Lord, help me to be clear. When it's a no Show mm -hmm. me the no and help mm -hmm. me respect your no. Right. So that I don't keep going and trying to make it. Well, mm -hmm. what about this? Well, what if this work? Mm -hmm. What if that? Because I can try to rationalize my own oh, job. Sure. Mm -hmm. Help me accept because I don't want to waste time. I don't have right. time to waste. I don't want my heart involved. I don't want my mm -hmm. kids involved. Mm -hmm. I don't want to waste money. I don't want any of that. So whatever is not on the table with your will, can we just help me to see that real clear and walk mm -hmm. away from it? Give me the right. courage to walk yeah, away. Man. Right. I got like you I was saying. Years, I, then I, I, the ten years. When I met my yeah. wife uh, mm -hmm. thirty-four years ago, I was living in California. California, she was living in Portland. See, that's right. And we mm -hmm. started talking about getting together. Mm -hmm. First thing my wife told me was, I don't do long distance relationships. There you Amen. go. There you go. <laughs> so I had to make a decision right then and right. there. Uh -oh. Let, it go. Let it all play. That's right. That's Amen. right. You know, the Amen. bottom line, you got to have a boundary. You got to have, have a purpose. That's right. Like you got to have a goal. And a plan. And a plan. What, yeah. what are we doing this for? How what long is this going to take? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And personally, I'm not for long distance relationships. I just think that if, if you're serious, somebody needs to make a plan. Yeah, One know. of you need to be moving. That shows back to what Pastor Weaver said, intentionality. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and if you start to talk about those things for real, you may decide, well, I'm not willing to move for this yeah. one. Right. If that's somebody you're not willing to move yeah. for, then you don't need to waste no more time. You ain't willing to marry them either if you ain't willing to move. Right. Yeah, that's right. Somebody got to move. Yeah. You got to ask each other tough questions so you can get to the answer. A next question says, how long should a couple remain dated before getting married? I think again, that's up to again the, oh. one size don't fit all for that. Oh, there you go. Yeah. One size does not fit all for that. And I would say that, you know, in, in certain seasons of your life, when you get older, you start to turn things a little bit quicker. Yeah. There you and go. you start to realize your days ain't long as some of these young bucks, you know. <laughs> and you gotta say, look, I gotta maybe shorten that window. You know yeah. what I mean? Where they might have been dating for a year. You might be dating six months and really realize that that it works depends for you. on the relationship. I want to be stuff. with this person, but see, because um, understand this too: that marriage is not just strictly based on love; it's based on commitment. No. I'm making a commitment to an imperfect person, and they're making a commitment to me who is in person perfect yeah. too. But the fact is, in their imperfections, I see enough that I really want to be with them. Yeah, I want to be with them and feel that we can work out all these other things. So. With that being said, I would just say to whoever it is, one size don't fit all, but now we just heard what the answer was for two years. So now, look, if you're planning on one of these Oprah Winfrey weddings and you got to do all this, well, then you you put more into the wedding than you are into the marriage. Right, there you go. So, so right. put the focus on the marriage and not so much on the wedding. Amen. Hey, I got the last question is addressed to a single person. The single person asked this question. 
while single, how should I prepare myself for a happy marriage? Wow. Excellent question. Yes. I'll give, I'll give, I'll give, I'll give the, 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 the short version and then I'll pass it on and let everybody give their version of it. Okay. And we'll close um, with this one. This will be the last question. Yeah, since this is the last we'll question, out. I would say as you prepare yourself to be the gift, because God has made each one of us a gift to another individual, that if you want to be a gift, you take the time, just like you would wrap a perfect gift and the present, you don't only concern yourself with the outside, mm -hmm. you concern yourself with the inside. inside. And presentation has a lot to do with everything. If you want to present yourself as a gift, do those things that God says for you to do. Amen. Look at the Proverbs 31 woman. Mm -hmm. Look at throughout the Bible, what type of women did God say you should be in order for him to prepare you for the mate that he wants to give you to? Amen. And it all starts with you remaining celibate, with you being holy, with you being godly, with okay. you being spiritual, with you being Holy Ghost filled and all the other stuff. But that's my take on that. You prepare yourself and God will send you who he wants you to, to have. Amen. My wife. Right. No, Build yourself in your most holy faith. Uh, brothers, I think we have a responsibility too. Uh, if, they, if, if, if that question is even for a man, I think there are books out there uh, yeah. that we can be reading. Uh, but all of that stuff deals with, as Pastor Weaver said, wholeness from the individual perspective. Because your your a spouse is not going to fulfill you. Yeah. They will partner with you. Yeah. But they're not going to fulfill you. You need to be happy in your own skin, happy in your relationship with Jesus Christ. You got to have something to come to the table. And so, you know, the practical stuff, work on your credit, work on your... Amen. You know I'm Amen. Uh, Amen. Amen. Come on, kid. Yeah. 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 Well, all that stuff. Do all mm -hmm. the stuff you're planning to do because that, that gets hard after you get married. It's hard to go to school, Mary. It's hard to... Do all yeah. that stuff. If you want a degree, get it now. Do right. you might meet the person in class, right. but don't 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 start save all this other stuff you want to do. Yeah. If travel, do those kind of things so that you're ready and you don't have these longing to go out and do something else. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And all I have to add to this is, if you want God's prince, you got to be a princess. And if you That's want right. God's prince, you want to be That's want right. God's princess, you got to be a prince. That's That's right. Right. And you got to be who God tells Amen. you to be according to his word. Right. Amen. Amen. And, and you do that, God will definitely bless you with one of his best. And I like what Karima said earlier, <laughs> that we have to be determined to be interdependent and not codependent. Yes. So I we like know that. what we yeah. bring to the table. Mm -hmm. We know what the spouse is going to bring to the table. And we can see what God's going to do with the relationship. I was just talking to a young lady yesterday and my counsel to her was that she was praying about this situation. You go to God with your hands open. I don't want to mm. hold on to nothing that God does not want me to have. That's so right. Pray with my hands open. If this is the one for me, God, you give them to me or give her to me. If not, my hands are open. It's free for you to fill them with who you want to feel. Yeah, you want. That's a good word. To grow, uh, mature me and groom me and prune me, whatever he's going to do with me to make me ready. And I'm going to pray yeah. in this posture. Yeah. 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 Amen. That's well, good. praise God. Thank you all. Uh, I, Pastor Weaver, Pastor Curry, Sister Patricia, Sister Karima, thank you guys. Listen, I've been reading the chat comments and listening yeah. to them and looking at them and people have been responding positively. They have really received what the Lord has said. There are some questions in the Q&A that we've already kind of addressed and answered, even though we wouldn't say them specifically. Thank you all for your time. I know this was a blessing. Yeah, listen, yeah. and listen, and those who are in the chat, they're already beginning to talk about what a blessing it is. And thank you, for, thank you guys. And I appreciate you all. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for being transparent. Yeah. Thank you for being open. Hallelujah. And for those of you who are watching, listen, the Bible tells you uh, not only just be hearers of the word, but yeah. hearers also. Amen. Now that you've heard all this, you've mm -hmm. received all this, now you need to put it into practice. If you need further information or further insight, the Bible says find you a good counselor yeah. that can help you walk through these things. Listen, mm -hmm. praise God for these men and women. Continue to pray for them as we will continue to pray for you. Let's pray as we close. Father, we thank yeah. you and praise you again for this time that you've allowed us to spend together and to be able to share from our own experiences 
what you have taught us, what you have given us, and what you've shown us as it relates to marriage and to relationships with one another. Bless these marriages. Bless these couples. We pray that you would strengthen. We pray that you give wisdom. And we pray that you would help build relationships that will glorify you and, and bring blessings to those involved. Thank you again for this time. Ask you to bless the rest of our day now, we pray. In Jesus, in name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thanks, thanks, uh, Josh. Thanks, Linda, for inviting us to come. Oh, you're welcome. You're more Thank, you guys. Thank you guys for coming. Both you. Of you. We'll have to do it again. Yes. Well, we will. We'll yes. do it again. Definitely will. Yeah. Because we'll I'm sure there's response. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. They're going to want to partake. The curry. God, <laughs> God bless, bless you. Guys. God bless you. God bless you all. You all be blessed and you all have a blessed day. There should be a gift coming to you in the mail. So well, we already hope. received it. And thank Good. you so well, much. God, for I just already got, got it. it. Thank you. Amen. My way of Amen. saying thank you for being here. Thank today. you. Thank you. God bless y'all. Y'all have a good God afternoon. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, I know.